Hello, everybody. Long two days. I guess many of you are tired and uh, looking to the hour. I will try to entertain you a little bit for 30 minutes and tell you the story that I try to tell often in Europe, talking about consumers, talking about business, business challenges, legal challenges that the industry is facing. And of course, I try all the time to encourage countries to start up something that is written there, that is uh, an IB, an Interactive Advertising Bureau. An IB is a trade association and it's, a, it's an open club, a club where everybody concerned about digital can join. You are media, you are a publisher, you are an agency, creative or new media, or media agency, you are a service provider, a software technology provider, you are a lawyer, a survey company. All these companies do often help to set up a trade association, a, an IB, or I know here in the south of uh, Europe it's often YAP, a YAP. Create a local YAP. Today we have 20 YAPs uh, representing more than 5,000 companies. And then we have a European YAP that has some specific missions to deliver. Um, we do represent, I think, the larger part of the ecosystem and I will tell a little bit why I think it's important to, to have a YAP for this industry. That will not be the main focus but I hope that through the story you will feel like hey we need this for Bulgaria, we need this one day for Czech Republic, Slovakia and in all the places where we, we still are not there. So first thing that we underline in, in the story is that marketing for us will will not be the same anymore. As of 2009, 2010, with what is happening now, we believe that the marketing that will be created in 2011 and 12 will be different. Yesterday I was in a panel and I think we discussed about the digital centric approach. And I think that's the right one. It is not solely digital. It is not exclusively dig digital. I think digital becomes the center of many marketing and media strategies, and that will certainly happen. And why? Because of this. This is the Financial Times, an article of a couple of months ago in the beginning of the crisis, where suddenly you see that during the first part of 2009, traditional advertising was dropping dramatically. When you are losing 8, 15, 20, to sometimes 50% of your advertising revenues, as a company, you need to rethink your business model. You cannot just escape from this crisis because it will, from my point of view, it will still uh, be there for a couple of months or years. I think maybe 2010 and 11 will still be tough times. And you cannot continue to run your business if you are a publisher or a TV broadcaster or if you're putting billboards on the street, you cannot continue to deliver your business the same way when this happens. And I think this big shakeout, I hope, will be a little bit the point where all traditional and new media, I think everybody together in this uh, great ecosystem, the advertising ecosystem, will come around the table and will discuss about the marketing and the media of tomorrow and how will we run this marketing and media and where will the money come from? Because we need to earn money. We cannot just run businesses for non-profit. We are not non profit I am. IB is a non-profit, but they are not. So we need to find solutions and I think even if it's not a nice thing to, to live in, I think a, a good crisis will force and push everybody to come with new, new thoughts, new services, new products, new business models. This was for us also because when we tell the story to the advertiser and the agencies, I say like, is this really different digital? Because we've been doing marketing and media for so many years in the 90s, in the 80s, in the 70s, and it's a bit the same. It's now, it's another screen, it's a small screen, a bigger screen, but it's the same. No, I think people were used to be quite passive in the way they were communicating with brands. They were seeing brands on the television, they were seeing brands on the, on the street. They were eventually getting some direct mail in their home, eventually reacting, but it was very passive the way they were. The only moment where we became active was in the store. In the store we were going, we take the wallet and we buy a product or a service. But between the moment of communication and the moment of what we're all looking for, they buy something, 
there is a very passive period. And I think here, what we try to explain to, to the marketers and the advertisers is this, this interactive and active way to engage with brands, to communicate, to dialogue, to respond, to give opinion is something very new. And I think that we need to underline. The rest, yes, the recipes are still the same. Try to be emotional. Try to, uh, to create something special, to have a great idea, a great concept. Yes, of course, the business is still a little bit the same. But the fact to have this interaction is something particular and special that we need to explain, to discover, and to educate the marketers and the advertisers, saying in the 21st century, this is what you, would, uh, you, you need to look for. And probably there are still people behaving like this, a bit passively, on the millions of Bulgarians surfing every day. I guess some of them are still passive online. They just read. They go to blogs, but they don't post comments on the blogs. They read the, the comments from others. Okay, fair enough. Maybe two-thirds of the population in Bulgaria don't post blogs, but one-third are posting, and they influence the others. And that's something you have as an advertiser to realize that that's something really new that is happening now in the digital landscape. That's why we are different. And that's why I try to say to advertisers we are the place where consumers and brands can dialogue, can get in contact. All the digital platforms, is it a, for me it's all the same. If it's a mobile, if it's a big screen, a smaller screen, on digital platforms I think it is the right place, the great place where brands and consumers can get in contact. Not exclusively. Again, go in a store and you can also be in contact with brands. Look on the street, look on television, you can be in contact. But I think this real interactive place is really our digital world and digital platforms. He's a bigger president than me, I'm a little president, but uh, this big president uh, has underlined the same. We have to change. It is now or never. And I think it was the right message to say to the American society they had to change something in the way they were economically and financially driving their market. And he was saying change. And I think he's trying to say to all the world change. And I think we as well. As an industry, we have to take the opportunity now to really change. And we cannot do it alone. It is not with the online players that we will change the ecosystem. We need to have everybody around this big table and saying, come on, let's think about the marketing and the media of tomorrow. Push-pull participation, where are we going? Don't know. For, for a couple of years it was all about the push and then about the pull and then about participation. I think there as well, let's rethink. This old book called Cutler is a book probably we will need to reinvent. The metrics, the GRP, the OTS, uh, reach and frequency that were driving all the traditional media industry, we need to rethink them as well. We need to say, what is important, or important? This engagement, how do we measure engagement? Is the length of contact something important? In the past, it was only 30 seconds. It was an occasion to see my brand 30 seconds eventually on the TV. Now it is sometimes 12 minutes, 24 minutes that you are engaged on a platform with brands. Oh, how do we value that? Is there a value? How much euro is that worth? Is that more worth or less than an occasion to see 30 seconds a brand in a spot? Don't know, but we need to think about it and to see how we can uh, come up with new solutions. Technology is something fantastic because, yes, digital platforms where consumers and brands are connected, but also the technology. Eh? Today, with the great softwares that everyday companies are putting on the market, make it possible for you, the brands and the marketers, to do mass customization. You can, with, when you are Amazon, you can do a bookstore for all the world and you can still be very personalized because you can still say, hey, Alan, long time ago, you were two weeks not on my platform. How do they know this? And again, all the technology behind is fantastic because I've seen you have been buying these books and I can recommend you other books. And some people that are reading the same books as you seems to read these books. What do you think about it? All kind of fantastic personalized approaches that technologies enables. And again, thanks to mobile application now as well, we, are, we have it always with us. We cannot, and I, I guess our generation and everybody here in the room, we like to be all the time connected. We have Blackberries, we have uh, smartphones, we have PCs, and we are constantly connected. Means a lot of connection points and opportunities for the brands.
This is a plane I will take this afternoon to go back to Brussels, or I hope not. But this is an invitation to say to everybody, think out of the box. You have to think differently. The music industry is a perfect example. The music industry has changed dramatically. Before internet or after internet, the music industry has changed. But there are still people making songs, producing music. There are still people selling music. But there was something strange and new, and this Napster or this LimeWire and all, all these downloads of music was suddenly something that has shaken the industry. They've tried to ignore. They've tried to put it in court. They've tried to do a lot, but then they saw the consumer, and the consumer is downloading, sometimes paid, sometimes illegally, but what is positive is that never, never, ever since years and years, music has been so part of our life. Everybody lives much more with music than 20 years ago. But the business model has been totally challenged because the Rolling Stones are still alive. But they need to see from where are coming their revenues. And companies like Sony are still distributing and selling music. But they had to review their business model as well. So the music industry before and after this big shakeout has changed, but they're still alive. New players, sometimes players died, others appeared. And I think this is the same now, what hopefully, if we think out of the box, will happen with uh, media and marketing. A couple of challenges. For me, two big challenges that uh, we have as an industry, a business channel uh, challenge and a legal challenge. The business one is the fact that, yes, yesterday as well, Playman was uh, highlighting the size of our industry. Am I proud? Yeah, not too bad. We have 12.9 billion euros in 2008 invested in online marketing in Europe. In the States, it was about 16.6. .6, so together, we weighed 30 billion in 2008. Maybe there is still one or two billion in Asia, maybe one or two billion somewhere, somewhere else. But so we can say maybe that our industry is worth something between 30 and 35 billion euros in media spending online. Is that good? I, I'm still there to say we are still small. The, the battle is still not over because I think there is a figure that I ever heard that total marketing and media spendings below the line, above the line, everything mixed up is something like 480 billion euros. That means that 35, if we're that, at that size and four, 480, we're still under the 10 percent and I think that's the reality. So we are still not in a society where digital centric is happening every day in marketing strategies and in media strategies. It is still, many people talk about, many congresses are happening, but in the daily life, we are not there where we should be. So we need still to continue to fight and to work. And the other thing that I learned from these figures, okay, UK is big, Germany, etc., not bad. The percentage, like we said yesterday as well, impressive to see that 24.4% in Denmark has been spent in the online marketing in 2008, and unfortunately in Greece it's still 2.1% only. It will grow, inevitably, it will grow. But also that other little chart there says me that two-thirds of the business and the money that is coming into our system now is direct response. And the economy and the crisis will not diminish that role. People will look to, to us as a direct response tool. You know what? I put money in digital. Why? Because it creates conversion, it creates leads, uh, I can deal with CPCs and CPAs, and I can all, everything is concentrated on the direct response, on the click. It's a click machine. And something is saying to me, this is a big, big, big business challenge. We need to convince and to underline that in digital you can also do brand advertising. You still, you can do what you were doing on television for so long. If you put a brand on a mobile or on a PC with certain formats, a video advertising, big banners or whatever, you still can do build brand preference, build top of mind, share of voice. It is possible online, but today it's not where the investment is going. And I'm proud of the UK. It's a big market. Digital is big, bigger than TV now, but two-thirds is direct response. And if we cannot convince the industry, the advertisers, that they can do brand building also online, then I think we will lose an important battle. And that's why IAB Europe, YAP Europe, decided with the board a month ago, we will try to declare 2010 as the brand advertising year. 
and we will try to create a lot of initiatives, work on some things to say to all the world, direct response will grow. It's crisis, it's economical slowdown, automatically there will be direct response in many strategies. But we will say in big, brand advertising 2010. And we will work on three things. One, the formats. Try to better highlight what are the formats that help to create brand advertising. Maybe we need to create a new, bigger format, a, a new big, bigger banner like they did in the US. Maybe we need to provide better guidelines about video advertising. How do you play with video advertising? What is the length of a pre-roll? Is it seven seconds, 11, 15, 30? We need to work and explain better. Brand advertising formats are these ones. Guidelines, standardization, maybe new formats, but prove that they can do that. Another thing that we will be working on is the measurements, because again, measurements like clicks and page views and impressions and unique visitors, it's okay. It's quite well done. I know that in some markets we still need to improve it, but let's say that the direct response measurement is quite well established and more and more standardized. But again, the brand advertising, what is the metrics to prove that you can do brand advertising online? GRP OTS? Don't know. But let's think about it. In 2010, we need to think about the measurement and the metrics that we will use to prove that brand advertising is possible online. And the third one is, of course, research. Research because we need to prove, we need to have case stories. We need to prove that in a pre-test and a post-test, the brand that was promoted on digital platform have raised in top of mind, have raised in share of voice. There is a big brand preference because you were doing online brand advertising activities. So the three layers of the, the year of brand advertising for 2010. We will work on that at European level, at national level as well, and hopefully we will gain some revenues thanks to that. This is a chart we produce with PricewaterhouseCoopers because often people are saying to me like, uh, what will happen in 2009, your digital, will it grow or not? They have tried with PricewaterhouseCoopers to put the GDP on the left and then the the proportion of ad spent uh, on horizontal, and they've tried to position the countries. And, and indeed, I think that the red countries, what are the most heavy penetrated online markets, they will have probably a growth of zero to 5% in 2009, 2010. It's still quite a good performance eh? because in the meantime, many other media are falling down 10%, 20, 50, I'm not happy for them, but something is good for us that our share will be much bigger. And again, size matters, like I said yesterday. When you do represent 20% of all the online spendings in Denmark, you cannot go to your CEO and say, you know what, I had to cut budgets and I cut all digital. You cannot. When you are at 2%, like in Greece or in Austria, you can suddenly disappear for, from a media strategy. You can go to your CEO and say, you know, 2% we had to cut, I just leave internet. That's possible. But when you are 20, not. So I'm still looking sometimes for size. But 2009, 2010, I think that the red countries can like move still 4 or 5%. I think the blue ones, I hope, will be able to reach this 10%, 10 to 15. And that was my, I think, opinion also about the Central East European markets. I think you are still markets where potentially we can see growth of 10 to 15 and maybe more percent. I was talking with uh, Jarek uh, from Poland yesterday and he think he can reach 15 percent this year in Poland. So okay, let's see. But again, the message is direct response you can do online, but also brand advertising. And always underline brand advertising with specific tools and formats and direct response with other formats and other tools. The legal debate the legal debate is important. Eh? You have a, a famous commissioner, Bulgarian one, that has been working very hardly and very efficiently in Brussels, Kuneva. Ms. Kuneva, the commissioner, she was the protector of the data, of the privacy of the consumer. Fantastic job, no problem, somebody has to do it. And it was nice to be working with her. But we had to find an agreement, a deal. The deal is still not there because they are saying you're stealing privacy and the data from, from the consumer. And we say, no, we are not stealing. 
We are just trying to communicate and dialogue with consumers on an efficient way, on a relevant way, and therefore we use technologies, cookies, IP addresses. We try to target. Why target? Because in the past there was a lot of waste. And waste is not good for advertisers. Waste is not good for the consumer. It's irritating. When I have constantly advertising on my television for things that I don't need, it will irritate me. So we are targeted, focused. We use cookies. We use IP addresses. And you cannot just block us from using these technologies. Because then you will eventually damage or cause problems for the consumer. Why? They, they receive all these for free, all these beautiful brands, from search engines to blogs to forums to uh, communication tools, everything for free. It's, uh, even books are written about it, the free lunch, everything for free. Is the deal then to, eh, what, is, what is the trade-off? Are you saying to consumers, this is for free, but then I, I need to receive your data? No, I think the trade-off for me is still trust. You can use all this consumer for free, and trust me, I will respect you, but the more you say about who you are, and the more you, you let me the opportunity to get to see what behavior you have, etc., the more I will be able to target and to send you more relevant messages. And I always say to Cuneva and the others, don't think that the consumer in the 21st century is naive, they are less naive. The new generation are not stupid and naive. They like control, they are skeptical, they have an opinion, and they know that they can express their opinion. There are great tools out there. But that debate is an important one. And that's also why we need a YAP in Bulgaria. Because we need a face for this industry that is at local level saying the same story to your local authorities. And I will say the same story in Brussels. And if in Brussels and in Sofia, but also in Copenhagen and in London, we all tell the same story, then I think the regulator will start to accept our arguments and we will try to find a solution, a solution with some law and regulation, with some self-regulation, and with some good practices, trustful for the consumer. This consumer is, of course, something that we have tried to study, because on the legal debate, like on the business debate, I had three things to do work on the formats to, to defend a bit more brand advertising, work on the formats, work on measurement, work on research. On legal, we think we have also like three, four things we should do better. One thing we will offer for the industry in a couple of months is an opt-out, an opt-out solution. It's a plug-in that we will offer to the consumer. If you really want not to be hit anymore by third-party cookies, we will offer you an opt-out. Fair enough. If you want, you can do it. This is an opt-out. And we will promote it in the countries. We will say, if consumer complains about the usage of cookies, we have an opt-out. Here it is. We will work on education. We will create a couple of uh, websites where we're going to explain in full transparency what is a cookie, what is an IP address, what is targeting, what is tracing, what is tracking. We'll explain it in different languages. At least we educate and we inform. And we want also to go deeper into research into self-regulation. Self-regulation is a whole set of program. By the way, last week, the self-regulatory organization for Bulgaria has been launched. So you have now a person here in Bulgaria who will take care of self-regulation in Bulgaria. It's also important that we have it. So that's uh, our third layer. The fourth one is research, and that's where we come here to this point, is that often when I go to seminars, it is fantastic. Because often you have a regulator saying, you know what, yesterday evening my son, or two days ago my mother-in-law, and this morning my wife. The examples to take a law decision tomorrow are taken by personal experiences, personal examples. And I say, no, come on, you cannot create the law of tomorrow based on the experience that you have with your mother-in-law, with your sister, brother, or son. You need to have research. We need to talk with the consumer. That's why we created this survey, the MCDC survey. It has been launched one week ago. And what we did, we have launched already for 2009 uh, a, a, an enormous survey on 32,000 people. So that I will be able to say in 16 countries, I will be able to go to the regulator and say, your wife and your kids, very nice as an example, but I have another example. 32,000 people that we have questioned. 
We have questioned them about their trust and attitude towards digital. What do they do with social media, with mobile, with e-commerce? 32,000 people is much more than just your mother-in-law or your sister or brother. So listen to the voice of the consumer. And that is something that every year we will bring out, the MCDC survey. And I hope one day we can include Bulgaria, we can include more countries, that we have a total landscape with very useful information for you, the business, but also into the dialogue with the regulator. And I took a couple of slides out of that survey. Uh, you can have more. Uh, you send me a mail and I can get you all the slides, but I thought if I show them all, they will sleep and they will die. So I just took a couple of slides. A couple of slides that deal with the survey. So first of all, which countries did we work on? These are the 16. Like you see from your region, we have already Poland, Romania and Hungary collaborating. So not bad. We have three countries from Central East Europe. And then some Scandics, some West European countries, 32,000 people, not too bad. They, the countries, the 16, are also interesting because they, they have different internet penetration. What makes probably that the consumer from Romania, you cannot compare them with the consumer of Sweden, or the one from London, or the one from Spain. You need to take into consideration the penetration of broadband, the penetration of internet access. And you see in the different colors, in orange, above 75% of internet penetration. Then you see in the gray, between 50 and 75, and lower than 50%. That also we need to take into account when we question consumers, and that's also an education that I do every day, to the Americans as well, is Europe is Europe. Europe is, is not one big continent. It is a constellation of, of countries and different cultures and different people, and we need still to think global, but often to act local and to understand locally and to understand the differences between one consumer and another one. The main focus of all MCDC was very much for us important, the trust. And we, we questioned the consumer about four trust matters. First of all, the transactional trust. Have you ever, like PayPal was underlining, have you ever done some e-commerce online? Do you buy products and services? Are you afraid and why? Secondly, commercial. Commercial means advertising. Do you believe this advertising? Do you think it is more relevant and better than offline advertising? Informational. Do you believe all these things that are posted online? Are you honest when you post something? When you go on social media, do you say that you are uh, a nice rich man and in fact you are not? Or who, who, do you, who are you? Do you cheat online? Do you post real information? And technological, it is also important. Do you delete cookies? Do you use anti-piracy uh, anti software? Do you, do you use um, all the technologies that we are providing you, yes or no? So a couple of just quick scans and, 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 uh, and slides. Transactional, just look, eh, you have the different flags. And on the left, we have, uh, on the right, we have highlighted a couple of average percentages in each country so that you can have a little flavor of the differences. The question is, to what extent do you agree with the statements? I have my thoughts about the level of security of online banking. So do you trust online banking, yes or no? And when you see that in some countries, like uh, I think Norway, they say, I fully agree with that sentence. Oh, sorry, it's uh, Greece. In Greece, you see that more than 50% have thoughts about the security of online banking. So again, if you think about PayPal, if you think about all your e-commerce developments, if you, th if you want to launch a, a pan-European e-commerce activity, think about the difference between Greece, where one out of two surfers have their thoughts about the security of online banking, while the, the lowest country is Norway, where it's only about 18%. 18% in Norway still have thoughts about the security, more than 50% in Greece. Take into account the differences from one country to another one. And it's a good exercise to see if you know the flags from Europe. So try to position where Romania, Hungary, and, uh, and, and Poland are. Have you ever purchased a product or a service on the Internet via any of the connection methods? So the average is 57% in Europe have already bought something, a product or a service online. But you see differences with 22% have done it already, up to 
69% I think it's in Denmark. So between Hungary and Denmark, there is a big difference. So again, if you develop e-commerce activities, be aware that we can have big differences from one country to another one. We have created a, a trust index barometer for e-commerce, and I think that will be good every year to bring it back. And how did we manage to have like a, a barometer, and how is it built? It is built on the experience that a population have with online banking, with e-commerce, and what they all declare to do online. We, com we, we combine all this information, and then we create a, an index. Which are the countries that are above the index or below the index? The index average is 184 and then you see that some countries are really above this index no surprise the Scandics the Dutch the English people and some are below again it's good for you dealing not only in Bulgaria but in a, an entire region or in the entire Europe to understand the differences informational trust do you cheat online do you believe what is posted online yes or no which of the following activities did you perform on the internet? And uh, one of the things we wanted to know, I am a member of an online social network, because it's true that it is impressive to see eh? all these social networks. We only, we only talk always about Facebook, but there are many other. In Europe, there is Natchak Latcha in Poland, there is Heis in the Netherlands, there is Netlock, Netlock very present also in Turkey. There are many, there is uh, Skyrock in France. Many different social networks. Are we really all member of this, yes or no? and you see the differences from one country to another one. Do you have more trust in a website when it provides a privacy policy? You know there is often like a, a little thing saying uh, privacy policy. Do, does this matter? Is this important? Is it transparent enough? Do you trust more a website? Well, you still can see that it has an impact on the trust of the consumer for a website. So if you develop a website, be sure and be clear that you put a privacy statement on it and that you explain what is your privacy policy on your website to protect the consumer? Technological trust, just one slide, with a couple of things like the antivirus, the firewall, and do you store passwords online in your browser? You see there as well that the software, like the antivirus and the firewall, are quite well penetrated and used. The storage of passwords still a little bit like scaring, apparently, because not everybody is uh, happy to store passwords online. And I have one slide, with, uh, but I, had, I, I don't show it here, but with the deletion of cookies. And it is interesting to see how many people are deleting cookies with big differences between men and women, between the Nordics and the South countries, between countries where Internet is there since a long time with a heavy penetration and people that have less experience with Internet. You see a big, big differences in the deletion of cookies. And we need to think about this on a, on a regulatory point of view. What are we going to do there to make sure that we can, we can uh, give more trust to the consumer about the usage of the technologies? Commercial trust, there also as well. When we do online marketing, it, we try to be more relevant. We try to be fun. We try to be more relevant, more targeted. But do they think it is, it is, it is a more credible advertising? Uh, so the question is like, to what extent do you agree with the statement? I find online advertisements or promotions to be more reliable than advertisements on TV, magazine, and on the radio. And again, I'm not here Copperfield saying, yeah, digital will change everything. No, you see that the advertising that we are producing, we should make sure that it, we make it more reliable because to, I think, 21% in Romania think that it is more reliable the online advertising, but some countries uh, like the Netherlands uh, is maybe 2-3% where they say it's more reliable. So I think there as well, as an industry, think again about how to address advertising on digital platforms. Social demographical profile, again, there are many slides, but I just take a few snapshots. Uh, interesting to see the differences in, in age, and I think there typically Central East Europe is a very interesting market for us because you have a less degree of online penetration in your countries. Okay, Sofia is impressive, 67% apparently, so it's quite good. But the rest of uh, the market is only at 30%. So I think you have less penetration, but you have a younger generation, a young population online. And I think that's interesting because it's good to sometimes have a, have a zoom and a focus on 
the young generation, and I think you can see how they behave by studying Central East Europe. The internet profile there as well, many information we had, but for instance, the how long are you on internet? And I think that matters if you have already 10 years experience online because you are living in Norway and Sweden, or if you just discover online because you just connected, it can create a different attitude towards online, towards the trust that you have for online activities. And so you see there as well how long people in average are online already from one country to another one. The day when, uh, on, on normal days, the, the usage of internet, how long do you use it on average per day? More than three hours, one to three, one or less. And there as well, you see the differences from one country to another one, where in some countries you see that more than three uh, hours, 41%, again we go back to uh, some countries, 44, 41, down to 18 uh, in a country like Belgium. So you see differences in the the, the experience and the length of contact. And I think uh, uh, Norm Johnson said before, yeah, people look enormously TV, and I think TV and Internet are certainly, in our daily media consumption, probably two places where we spend a lot of time. And there as well, from one country to another one, take it into account when you develop your strategies. Our network, just to uh, have one slide that uh, deal about uh, YAP, uh, September 2009, we have 20 countries, we have more than 125 staff, so we are a staffed organization. I am paid by IB Europe, I am staff from IB Europe, but in total, in all the different countries, we have 125 people working, 22 in the UK, 15 in Germany, two in Turkey, four in Norway, so everywhere you have like a, I call them digital embassies, you have a, you have a, a company working for you, the industry, knock on their door and ask them what they can deliver and do for you. 20 countries, we hope to go to 27, to 30, and I hope next year I can put uh, yep, Bulgaria. It's mentioned there. I have five countries that I would like to open, Russia, Bulgaria, Ireland, Portugal, and Luxembourg. And then hopefully we will go to the others as well. Um, the priorities from YAP Europe is to work very much on the first thing. It is public policy, so really work. On, on the trust and transparency that we need to have with the consumer and the regulator. Standardization, so important. I heard one day that from a media, uh, a media agency that to run a pan-European campaign just of banners in Europe is a nightmare. You need to produce 200 different banners. Imagine we had to produce 200 different television spots for a campaign in Europe. It would have killed the TV industry. We as well, we need to think about simplification, standardization. Benchmarking, it's things like MCDC, understanding the consumer and the differences from one market to another one. And best practices, make sure that we become everywhere very efficient. This is my little story. I always say thank you. Continue to push the digital industry with YAP, YAP Europe, and with national YAPs, and hopefully next year with uh, YAP Bulgaria. And if you have questions about survey, studies, facts, figures, just address mails, either in Romania, we have people from Romania here and YAP Romania is there, you can address your questions to YAP Romania, YAP Poland, Hungary, Croatia, Turkey, Greece, or to YAP Europe, don't hesitate to address your question, always there to, uh, to help. That's it, um, any question now, just put it, and uh, if not, you can uh, send a mail or, or get in contact later, a question at the back. Hi, I'm Milan Trace from Hack and Tell, and I have one question regarding user privacy. Actually, uh, when you said uh, things about uh, user privacy and concerning uh, users deleting cookies uh, and opt-in uh, link that you provide uh, for users to get out of your yeah. advertising system, uh, since all spam techniques depend on uh, using opt-in opt links, opt-out links to verify, user, to verify user emails and to see that user email is used and real. Uh, don't you think that that kind have some impact on advertising? And don't you think that if we want to establish uh, trust with users, 
Don't you think that we need to open our algorithms for collecting user data and just to give people choice to know what we are collecting and so they can have a choice to use our advertising networks or not to use? Yeah. Totally agree. When I use the word transparency, I think we business, digital business, we haven't done a good job. We, we are not clear enough how everything, we assume everybody understands everything. How is working a search engine? How is working an ad network? How is that banner coming to your screen at that moment? We should be much more transparent. Now again, we don't need to be naive and, or, 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 or dreaming as well. Even if we explain it, the consumer will need to, to read it still. It's often very complicated. Did you ever read the privacy policies from some of the the, the, the big portals. Always. Uh, it's not, but not many people are doing it because it's complicated, it's long, it is frustrat uh, frustrating to do. But I think we need to be absolutely much more transparent, explaining much more to the consumer and giving him choices for any of our activities. The one that really doesn't want us at all, we should uh, provide him with technology so that he can cut himself out. Explaining also why sometimes we need cookies to do something. Again, the, the first party cookies is a cookie that we install on your machine. When you are reading my newspaper, I install a cookie on you because I will store a certain number of information that will make your surf more easy when you come back. That first party cookie, we should explain. If you cut that off, you can. You should be able maybe to do it. But again, you will lose a lot of functionalities of a, of a nice surf session. Uh, but the third party cookie is true, that's something that is just there to provide advertising. You could be cut off of that. What about spam? What about all this? Totally agree. Long, a lot of work to do. Thank you. One, two, three, sold out. Yeah. Then I thank you very much for the attention and I hope to be there next year.